right, so we're going to be doing episode two, I think, standing part one. Some people have told me not to wear a mouth guard, so if you're wondering why I am, it's because I bite my lip too much, so I'm sorry if I'm mumbling. I'll try to be as clear as I can be. So we're going to do some wrestling. Actually, I'm going to so that's how you stand upright, like uh, more like judo style. And if you can't come closer, Although if you can't, I understand, you're going to me out. So, a lot of times in, uh, go back to the low head posture. In wrestling, a lot of times people will stand low, and people don't do that in jiu-jitsu as much, because they're going to get guillotined pretty quickly. So people adopt a more upright standing posture. But we'll go over low posture as well. But let's start off with the upright posture. So, I go over what I like to call like outside and inside clinch. Outside clinch is when you're doing things like posting, snapping, stuff like that, but you're not getting tied up with them. Inside clinch is when you're actually tied up and you guys are gridlocked into each other. So if we start off with the outside clinch, one thing I like is what I call the ankle snatch. You're gonna post on his shoulder and keep this hand out there and you're just gonna drop a knee. So let's say I drop my left knee, boom, and I'm gonna let my hand follow with me. So it's on the hip. Once on the hip, and let's say he goes down, I'm just gonna catch this and push. And if I hold on to it, there's some passes, but let's say I let go of it, because it was too, um, he was too wild, so I went boom, and I lost it. Now I'm playing open guard, and you know, we can go over open guard passing later, but it's not gonna be a normal open guard, because he just fell. It's gonna be a scramble situation. So that's a lot of fun. But let's say we did manage to hold on to the ankle, because you had a really nice grip, which you want to do that. The first thing I like to do, so boom, drop, knee, bam. I'm gonna do it nice and slow, because you know we're drilling. But you would use that momentum of pushing into him to follow up and pull on this, so that he doesn't have um, like a knee up, like a butterfly guard style. You're gonna drop your left shoulder here, and do a front roll to north south. Or now side control. But if I rolled more on him, I was being a little nice because I didn't want to pull my weight on him. The side go real slow. Bam! You'd end up more north south. So, in like a live situation with someone in comp, roll on their body. <laughs> They're not going to like it when that shoulder hits them and then rolls up to their chest and onto their face. But on him, I'm going to, you know, try not to land right on him when I get a front roll. And it's also a good way to deal with, like, frames. Because if you're going to roll onto them, they're going to put their, they're going to tuck their knees and elbows in like a butterfly guard, which is an easy way to address their frame. So let's say you go back down to your back and just tuck your uh, elbows and knees together. I'm going to roll on you. And so you don't get hurt, just put your bones in the way. So that's one way to not have to deal with when you're doing that roll into you know north-south side control. Not having to deal with them grabbing your arm or leg. Because if you're diving on someone with your shoulder going down, if they're smart, they don't want to get hurt, they're going to use their arms and knees to give them a shield so you don't land on their torso. So that's one way to really uh, make the scramble work in your favor. Because they're not going to try and grab your arm or leg in that situation, or they're going to get winded when you land on their stomach. So similar, but if you don't want to roll on someone, so boom, boom, cartwheel pass. So just push down on this, or if you can, push down on this. Bam. That one is definitely going to be more control if you can get the cartwheel going, less scrambly. Just depends on how they reacted and what kind of uh, positioning, because sometimes it's going to feel natural to go for the car wheel, sometimes it's going to feel natural to go for the front roll. Alright, next one is smash pass. This is really good if you want to be slow, like less scrambly. So bam, boom, you pull on this, you pull on this to create a pocket right here, so you can drive your shoulder right into there. Boom. And it's called a smash pass, because a lot of times they'll be turning towards you, so turn towards me. And you're still going to be here, 
You're gonna have to be driving all your shoulder weight into them and slowly work your way up. So this one, if it doesn't happen, immediately just take your time. But the previous ones, um, like let's say the front roll, if you don't get it, it's probably gonna create another scramble, so you might just do another front roll or another cartwheel following. Like same thing with the smash, or let's see if that's the next thing on my notes. Oh, next thing is banana split class, but before that, so these three, the first three go together really well, because like, uh, let's say I went boom, boom, and I'm going for the smash, so I extend, and he turns towards me. No, not that way. This way, and keep your elbows and all that stuff in. I'm not gonna be able to drop my shoulder anywhere on him, but I can sequence from going for a smash pass to a cartwheel pass. So if you're not able to get one of the three, it's probably because they defended it and let you get one of the other passes. So don't worry too much about forcing one of them you're just chaining from one to the next until they give you one. So let's say you're landing. Ugh. Let's just say you're here. Boom. So one other pass I like is what I call the banana split pass. Banana split pass is pretty much when I try and hook one leg and one leg with my arm. Boom. So it's like a half guard. I'm giving it to him. But I'm not letting him close his legs together. I'm trying to force his legs apart. <laughs> Are you getting stretched out? <laughs> he's defending because he's getting stretched out. So I guess the first thing we can go over is that there's a sub here. So if you turn, like let's say my uh, chest to the sky, and I get my legs locked, arms locked, I can start trying to pull his legs apart. It's not really the most reliable. Okay, he tapped. But in my experience, it's not the most reliable, but it's nice to, um, even if you don't get the tap, they're very compromised. They're not gonna really be able to defend because normally he's gonna wanna close his legs together. And I've got a legit half guard. It's gonna be hard for me to split his legs apart and try and pass. But if I have it way out here, it's the opposite now. He's fighting so hard to keep his legs together and I, I can take my time to set up my pass. But if you don't wanna set up for the submission and you go back to the original grip, I try and get this to the ground. I'm not gonna do it now because he's already defending because he doesn't like the pressure. I try and get this knee to the ground and open this out. And he's just been really uncomfortable here as I'm you know, working my different passes. So the first pass we'll go over is the hip height pass. So I'm gonna get my right foot and the shin is gonna go over this leg. I'm still gonna get that spreading motion, but I'm being a little, I'm being a little nice now, but again, like in comp or whatever, I'll be trying to keep this knee on the ground. And I don't think they're gonna tap. Don't think like, oh, he's gonna tap. More likely he's gonna defend really hard and it's gonna create a scramble. And those scrambles are gonna to lead to one of these passes. So the first pass, once you have the right shin over, is I'm gonna get this foot out and I'm gonna do a back step or you can call it a hip height pass. So, bam. Boom. So that's one. So if we go back to this position. The second one, if you don't wanna do a back step, maybe it's a little acrobatic you feel like. Get your left foot over your right foot. Take your right foot out. And then left foot slides out. And I just call the windshield wiper pass. Third one, from what I call the banana split pass. I call the banana split pass because this submission here I call the banana split. The third one, your left knee is gonna shoot up here. And once that happens, you can take this hand out and start working a butterfly mount pass. Just sliding your feet up. And you end up in the mount. So let's see what's next. And then the other one is, let's say he really likes wrestling and he doesn't want to play guard, or maybe he doesn't want to concede the two points if we're playing nogi jiu-jitsu. So pose, drop, boom, and then let's say he turtles. Boom, and then you can just start working top crab or any of the stuff from episode one, top, how to kill top, top turtle. So now we're gonna go over what if they don't fall over when you go for that. So I'm boom, drop, and he, he stay standing on that leg. Bam. So here, in this moment, I would just shoot for, it's not really outside single, but I do it from an outside single setup. I'm gonna go boom, outside single, get my left hand under this knee, 
right hand over the head. I'm gonna start going for a cradle. Once I got my cradle, it's pretty easy to do whatever I want to him. And being calm, you gotta be nice and gentle. You don't get called for slamming, so I'm taking him down like this. You can let it out, boom. Start working rear naked for back take, boom. Start working. Start working. Just type them out. Work whatever. You can work tops it out. I like tops it out a lot. That's my preferred way to finish outside singles, ending up in a cradle. If I can't get the cradle, then I usually try and come out to the back door for the body lock. So let's just say I go straight to like a outside single. So when collar tie, open him up, boom. And instead of coming up here for the cradle, I'm gonna try and pop my head out, boom. And now I have the back. And then from here, let's say I'm trying to get top turtle. There's a bunch of ways to get top turtle. One way that I like is you start pulling back, but he's gonna resist. And now his weight is going forward. So then you front trip. <laughs> And now you have top turtle with a front trip. You can also get it, try and tilt him to the left, he's gonna resist. And then get your knee to the outside of his knee, and you're gonna go to the right. Come up. So your knee just goes right here so that when you take him to the right, he's gonna try and step with his leg, but he can't because I'm blocking it. And then you end up in top turtle. And then, you know, keep working this stuff from episode one. Take a front trip, side trip, you got another side trip. So, this side trip you're gonna do by getting your heel right here. You're gonna tip him to the side, and once again, he's gonna try and move this foot, but because my heel is there, he's not gonna be able to. Back step, trip. Same thing, my right foot, I'm gonna send my right foot coming this way for his right foot. My right foot is gonna come for his left foot. And he's gonna go over my leg. And I personally like learning as many different trips because a lot of times you shouldn't really be forcing anything once you have the back. Sometimes you'll get so hungry, you're like, ugh, ugh. you're just gonna tire yourself out. Just be nice and gentle, move them around. Try something, you know, come up, come up. And if it doesn't work, try something else. If it doesn't work, try something else. And then boom, you got it. You just gotta keep trying, trying, trying something. Not too hard. You don't wanna call it some baked meats. You want some baked ones, so that way, you know, fake front trip, fake side trip, and then a really hard, back trip and the hard one probably was gonna work. And especially because they're off slightly off the balance. So you can pull them into your lap. This is good usually against someone who's a little smaller than you. So if you're here I'm just gonna fall back. And now I have top sit up. You can start working towards other stuff like back take, cross body. Or you can finish on top sit up which I think we'll cover in the open guard video. So when I pull them into my lap, you just want to pull them in, but usually just because I'm pushing forward, he's resisting by pushing back, and then I fall back, and he's gonna fall right into my lap. But when I'm going for the back, let's say I have the outside single, a lot of times I'll start off with that as my very first takedown, which I'm gonna pull them into my lap, and what I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and fall in, fall backward into my lap, but in a circular motion. So I'm gonna want him in my lap with me facing like this way. So the way that happens, if he's facing here originally, I'm gonna whip and go like that. So I shot him for the outside single, getting my body lock, pop my head out, and then I'm gonna use the momentum to whip around and now I pull him down, he's top turtle. 
right, let's see what's next. This one is really good against bigger people. We'll see if I can do it on Anthony. So if I have the back body lock, I'm gonna try and jump and get my shins behind his kneecaps in the effort of trying to get his knees to buckle forward. Cause he's staying nice and strong, but I get his knees to buckle, he's gonna end up falling down. So shins right into back kneecap, and you end up with a sit out. Or back take in this case, or a rear triangle or something, depending on the reaction. But on someone like Anthony, I don't typically go for it. I go for it on someone like, you know, 100 pounds bigger than me. Because a lot of times, they either fall back or they'll just be able to carry you. But they're leaning so much forward that you just fall up with a punch trip and you can get a punch trip on someone who's a lot bigger than you. So on someone like Anthony, who is not too big, a really good one is just a mat return. A mat return in wrestling is just when you bump your hips in, tilt to a side so that you're gonna try and spike him. Spiking is when you try and put someone's skull on the mat, which is illegal. But it's generally illegal if they don't have hands to protect themselves. Like if I had him with a body lock around his arms, you're not gonna be able to stop me from dumping him on his skull. That's gonna be illegal. But if he has his hands, and let's say he's hand fighting me, I don't want to deal with that. So if I jump onto his head, he's going to let go in order to um, break ball. And then now I have, like, uh, top side control in this situation. So if someone is trying to mess with your hands with a Kimura or something, just pick them up and put them on their head. Assuming you're in competition, maybe in class, be a little careful because some people, they're not smart. And they're going to stay holding onto that hand, and then you're going to get spiked. So if that's the case for safety, let's say you're hand fighting me, and he's still hand fighting me, I might not complete it. Because you don't want to put a classmate on their head. But most people hopefully, can you go for on me, Anthony? And then you try to get back up. That's the classic wrestling way of defending a mat return. Just break fall and pop, use that momentum to pop right back up. So if that ever happens to you, this is just good to know defensively, because a lot of people, especially in jiu who don't know about mat returns, they do let themselves get spiked. <laughs> and that is illegal, so if that happens to you, you probably win by disqualification, but you probably don't want to get spiked in the first place, so just mat return, pop back up, if, if you're going to defend it the wrestling way, which is more safe, you know, for your skull. <laughs> So sometimes when I'm going for a mat return, the person will start leaning back into me. And if that happens, I just pick them up and do like a back trip. And you end up in a similar situation. That's actually much more common. That people don't want to get dumped onto their face slash head. So you can just go backward instead. So we're gonna switch to a spiral ride. <clears throat> so if I'm with the back body lock, this hand goes to his hip, this hand goes here to like half Nelson, but it could work with a claw. Actually, uh, I think this is a claw. Yeah. What, you know what this grip is? Near side shoulder? Yeah. Okay, so near side shoulder, half Nelson, or a claw would work. If I had the option, I prefer the claw, uh, half Nelson. I'm gonna step my left foot here, and I'm gonna tip him to this way. And it's called a spiral ride, because there's a lot of spiral force. Now some other fun stuff, probably got someone who's just so strong, you can't take them down. So instead of trying to do a takedown, you just try and break them down. So I have the back body lock. I try and get a cross body hook in, which this is a hook, like a jujitsu hook. Once you go behind the shin, now you have um, a cross body. And then from here, if I can get this hand behind his back, I'm gonna start working, you know, like a hammer lock. Let me get it up his back. And you tap. Most people are not gonna let you do that, so you can pop your hand down. And then you start going for a power half. And then from power half, you can start working wherever you want. Back take, whatever. He's a little smaller than me, so he just fell down. But someone who's big and heavy, it's just a great way to just stay latched onto them while also making them work. Because I don't want to be getting tired holding you. 
You don't want to be gassing yourself out. You want to make him the one to tire. So I'm going to be getting my foot off the ground, trying to break his head down, trying to bring his arm up, and see my leg behind his leg. I'm going to be trying to twist this way to try and flare his leg out like this. And that's a great way to stay on top of someone who's a little strong, good, good base, and hopefully break them down. Or if they don't like it and they explode to get out, it gives you another sequence to go into. So one other thing to mention, so go to bottom sit out. We could do it from standing, but a lot of those, like the hammer lock that I went for from standing, it's gonna be a lot more dangerous because they could be exploding and all these things. Oh, let's go, Kyle. So they can be exploding and all this. Let's go, Kendra. They can be exploding, and so you wanna do it while they're on the ground, right? For practice. If they ever let their hand come up when you got power half, so, uh, we got cut off because of a little phone call, so not too big of a deal, but if you're getting a power half from and I'm working it down here because you saw like I was not really going to hammer lock on him standing up. That's because uh, for drilling, it's probably not the best to practice hammer or arm submissions while they're standing up. It's probably better from a sit-out, but you could do this from standing as well. If you got a power half, unless I had the cross body, like I had from stand up. <laughs> nice that it has to be behind the shin. Uh, you don't have to flare out behind the shin when you're in a sit out, but really a cross body is just, it's not, a, uh, this is a normal hook. Just by the hip and you kind of chest to chest. Cross body, you want to kind of go behind the hamstring and you're going to tilt your chest this way. So let's say I have a power half. If you ever let his hand come up, I'm going to try and feed it behind his um, head and uh, it'll come, come to this side. So I'm gonna feed his hand behind his head. I'm gonna use this hand to grab onto his hand. I'm gonna start bringing his elbow away. And then you got like a shoulder lock. I pretty much just consider it a one hand Americana. Most people don't put their hand upwards. So fight your hand to be down. And he keeps his hand coming down. Then you can start working hammer lock, guillotine, whatever. But once in a while, some people will react going upwards, which is, um, a little weird because you're not that strong with your arm above you. So in that case, just go straight for an Americana. But that's part one of like wrestling for jujitsu. I'm gonna do part two in the next video. If you learned something, please give me a like. Uh, thank you.